Welcome back, drafters, and for those of you who are following the draft, um, I appreciate you uh, following and uh, keeping up with what's going on. Uh, but today we're going to be on number three of the analysis series for the BRDL um, or the Pokemon Battle Room draft. Again, there'll be links below for all that stuff if you guys want to check it out. Um, but yeah, number three is Phil Jackson. So uh, just quick rundown if you guys are new. I base these team scores on five categories, offense, defense, speed, hazards, and momentum, which you guys can see in the left corner there. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot more that goes into team building. Please do not take this as the be-all and all for teams. Um, there's a lot more. So, you know, for example, uh, this team is pretty heavy on the special side, and usually you want to balance. That is something that could go into team building. But I chose these five categories as pretty basic five categories if you have these five things that are good. Uh, level or a balance level um, generally you have a decent team so without further ado um, i scored phil's team of 41 so this is a little bit above average um <clears throat> now the reason that is is like one of the big things in draft is speed so because trick room isn't really drafted a lot so when it is i mean this is a big problem for his team but um it's generally not drafted that much, so speed usually tends to be a pretty big precursor to a strong or winning team. And um, as you can see, Phil has probably the fastest team uh, out there, even with uh, the rain. He's got two Mons that are above 400. He's got Gengar at 350. He's got Gliscor, who's a pretty fast um, uh, defensive uh, Pokemon. And then you got Rotom as well, who's a very fast defensive Pokemon. Um, Volcanion at moderate speed, you got uh, agility on Empoleon, you got agility or rock polish on Metagross, uh, just a very very good team and then you have webs uh, just to top it off with all that speed control so <clears throat> um, yeah so 41 um, that that is kind of why this team's above average it's really that speed and the hazard control as you guys can see the two scores are 10 there but we're gonna start off with offense we have Mega Sceptile, Buzzwole, Volcanion, Regieleki to some extent, uh, Metagross, Gliscor, Rotom, uh, Gengar, and Empoleon. And then Shuckle, you could say he could use like the Power Trick set or whatever it is, um, but generally just going to be a defensive Pokemon. Um, but yeah, so a really, really key point to his team is a lot of his defensive Pokemon can be offensive, and this was something that I brought up in my NCPL analysis. Teams that did this, um, they had a really... Uh, good way to um uh i guess make their team versatile by you know making uh, offensive pokemon defensive or defensive pokemon offensive and this was really good mix-ups um for ma certain matchups and to catch the opponents off guard um and to you know win some matches right so for the first Pokemon on offense, so Mega Sceptile, uh, this is a great Pokemon. It is something that really ran through the NCPL draft, kind of unnoticed. And then, uh, lo and behold, when we we're getting into playoffs, it was like, wow, Mega Sceptile is actually doing really, really well. Um, now, that could be the player as well, but uh, or the tier draft, since it was much lower tiers. But I do think Mega Sceptile is being a little bit overlooked here. Um, yes, that times for weakness is bad, but again, this is a uh, Mon that has 427 speed. I believe it's 427. Very fast, uh, gonna outspeed, outpace most of the draft here, um, and it can be physical or special. So uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty hard to deal with, uh, or you know, even a mixed set, right? And it's special special attacking set, which is this common set. Doesn't have a lot of coverage, but we have hidden power available in this draft. Um, it has Leaf Storm, Dragon Pulse, Hidden Power, and then Giga Drain. Now, not the greatest coverage, but uh, on the physical side, you have Swords Dance, you have Aerial Ace, Drain Punch, Crunch, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, of course, and Outrage. Uh, Leaf Blade, Rock Slide, Throat Chop, Thunder Punch, Pursuit. Now, that's quite a bit of coverage, so um, I expect to see this physical set uh, at least a couple times. Um, just a very, very dominant set, especially with Lightning Rod. This is going to allow him to get this in offensively and set up Swords Dance, if that's the case. Um... You know, you could run Swords Dance, Leaf Storm, and then Drain Punch, and then a coverage move, right? And then that way you can kind of keep your, your your nuke in Leaf Storm, just in case uh, that water threat comes or something that you need to, you know, Leaf Storm or whatever, if you're burned or something, right? Um, but yeah, quite a bit of coverage here and a lot of versatility, not to mention it does have a couple utility options in Synthesis, Leech Seed, Toxic, Seismic Toss. So um, a really, really viable Pokemon that I think is being uh, kind of flying in under the radar here. 
This is paired on a team that uh, is going to want to get hit by electric attacks. Well, he doesn't want to get hit by electric attacks, but people are going to want to use electric attacks on this team. Uh, with Volcanion and Empoleon, uh, people are going to be prompted to use those electric attacks. Not to mention there are a few prominent electric Pokemon drafted. So, um, you know, not to mention just Volt Switch in general, right? So. Uh, this is really going to allow that Mega Sceptile to come in, get that Lightning Rod buff, um, that 1.5, uh, I think it's Special Attack. So yeah, you know, you come in with a physical set that has SD but Leaf Storm, then you, you have that Leaf Storm nuke that you can probably do twice um, since you get that boost. Just, just a really, really phenomenal Pokemon that I think is being a little bit overlooked here. Moving down the list, we have Buzzwell though. Uh, of course, we got to mention the Beast Boost, just an absolute problem. Uh, if you let it uh, get a KO here, even just a little cleanup kill, pretty pretty big problem <laughs> to give it that boost considering it has 400 attack, so uh, I believe it's 400 or close to. So then you have uh, Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Earthquake, and this is Drain Punch Stab with Bulk Up, with Beast Boost, very big problem. Uh, EQ, Ice Punch, Leech Life, again another recovery move that is Stab, very big problem. Uh, then you have Lunge, lower the attack, which is also very good if you have Lunge and Drain Punch. Um, Iron Head, Poison Jab, Rock Slide, Smackdown, and Thunder Punch. So um, just very, very decent coverage for what it's got going here. A slow Pokemon, um, a Pokemon that could take advantage of Trick Room if people tend to bring it against him. Um, that way he's not too nervous about it. Uh, and then it's, you know, utility options or recovery options. We have Ruse, Toxic, and Taunt. So um, a good Pokemon to help him uh, balance out this Earthquake weakness that he has that is quite big. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six Pokemon that are weak to Earthquake here. So uh, that, that Buzzwool is a, a big um, cornerstone to this team. We have Volcanion. Um, you guys know Volcanion with Steam Eruption. Just absolute nuke. Uh, really good uh, water fire stab and then water absorb which is also great because there's going to be a couple Pokemon that don't want to be hit by water attacks, Rotom Age, Gliscor, um, even you know Scald, people don't really want to get hit by Scald like Metagross and uh, you know even Sceptile if it's a physical set or Buzzwool right so uh, he's got one, two, he's got three, one, two, three, four, five, Five immunities on his team, so he's got Mega Sceptile and Lightning Rod, Water Absorb on Volcanion, uh, Flying Immunity with Gliscor, Toxic Immunity, po like Poison Immunity with Gliscor, uh, same with Gengar, and then you have Levitate on Rotom Age, and then you have Steel Type and Empoleon. It's this is a really a Steel Type with Metagross too. This is a very very good start to his team. Um, a very very overlooked point that I think people will miss is all these immunities on his team is very important. So. <coughs> But yeah, so Steam Eruption, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Earth Power, Flash Cannon, Focus Blast, Sludge Wave um, are Volcanion's offensive sets. And then of course you have Hidden Power just in case, but I mean generally Steam Eruption, Flamethrower, Earth Power is basically going to cover everything. That last move uh, can be Coverage, it can be any of his utility options like Explosion, Haze, Defog, Will Wisp, which are really great. Defog is also a really good option on Volcanion because Volcanion forces a lot of switches. So it's a pretty easy Defog in most cases. But again, being that fire type, kind of sucks being, if this is your primary defogger, uh, not the not the greatest, I would say. I mean, he's got way better options for defog on his team anyway, so. Um, and then you have Regieleki here. Now, Regieleki, to me, looks like... Sorry. Regieleki, to me, looks like just some speed control here, just in case he needs it, um, as there are some very fast Pokemon in the draft still. Um, Regieleki outspeeds everything if it's scarfed, outspeeds everything naturally. Um, just the only issue is that it's basically walled by electric immunity. So, um, But it can set screens. Uh, so the, this is the interesting interesting thing about the Regieleki on this team. Uh, the team is already pretty fast as it is, and his team doesn't really need screens. Um, I mean, you could you could set the screens up for like a sword stance, septile, uh, but that times for ice is not gonna matter. It's gonna you, it's it's more than likely still gonna KO it in in a lot of cases. Um, you could set up the screens here for like a weakness policy Metagross, which is a very viable sweeper. Um, again, you could set up for nasty plot Gengar too, but I feel like this team doesn't really need Reggie Eleki. I feel like for the point value of Reggie Eleki, 
he could have a Pokemon that might might be better and not uh, add to that Earthquake weakness. Just my opinion, still a good Pokemon on this team, uh, but in my opinion, not providing as much to the team as like every other Pokemon on this team, providing all these different things that it could do. I just feel it's very linear, this Pokemon. So then we have, uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, Reggie, like you guys know its moves. T-Wave screens, Extreme Speed, T-Bolt, Thunder Cage, Explosion, Rapid Spin, and screens, right? So, uh, yeah, you guys know that. Um, but Metagross here, uh, Metagross being a Pokemon that I noticed just, like, sometimes doesn't get drafted in draft, but I don't know why. It's it's good typing. It's really bulky. Uh, it's got um, uh, good coverage. It can be offensive. It can be defensive. It can be utility. It can be a lead. Um, it's got Bullet Punch, Earthquake, Ice Punch, Meteor Mass, Psycho Cutter, Zen Headbutt. Um, so this is something I want to mention, okay? Because <clears throat> we got into this a little bit in chat, but like... So, Psycho Cut and Zen Headbutt, they're a 10, 10 power difference, I believe it is, or 15. Um, in draft, my for me, I always try and draft moves that are 100% accuracy. There is nothing like losing a match because you couldn't hit a move. That is, should 80% of the time hit, or 70% time of the hit, even 60% of the time should hit, and you miss it, and you lose the game because of it, or you lose a Pokemon that's just like, very important to the game. Uh, that is why I'll, I will write down Psycho Cut, uh, and I would personally run Psycho Cut over Zen Headbutt, unless, unless I needed that extra damage to get a KO, it doesn't matter, it's the same. If it's a two, if they're you know one does sixty percent and one does seventy percent, it's still two hit KO. That's how I that's how I look at it in my head. <clears throat> but yeah, moving down the list, we have Rock Slide, Thunder Punch, and then you you have the Rock Polish on Metagross. The Rock Polish Weakness Policy set, absolute great cleaner. Um, and then there was a funny set that you know it sounds funny, but like it's it could be useful, and I've seen it is the Meteor Beam set. Uh, it ups the special attack. I mean, he's got good special attack coverage. Uh, hidden power is available in this, and it could be a great mix-up for the opponent. Um, and then you have Metagross's defensive options here. <clears throat> you have Stealth Rock, you have the Iron Defense Body Press set. It does have Cosmic Power, but no Stored Power. Um, Explosion, Toxic, and Trick. Trick, I think, is something that's very uh, undervalued with Metagross here. You know, Choice Banded Trick, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty viable option. You know, if you have something, somebody who's um, getting into the habit of switching into Metagross... Uh, because it's walling it really well Be even with the choice band the next turn the next time that it comes around you trick right and then you get that choice banded trick on that defensive pokemon uh you've really mitigated what it can do right and then we have gliscor here now gliscor is one of the pokemon here that i think everybody was just like oh you know well not everybody i mean there's a couple people who were talking about like why is gliscor so high um in the same thing as lando i mean to me, in my opinion, I feel like Gliscor is actually better than Landorus to some extent. <clears throat> now, obviously, they're used differently, but I feel the Toxic Heal is just so good at keeping Gliscor alive in in the match. Um, Landorus gets worn down a lot in matches because people have played against Landorus for so long now um, and so often that people just understand that you either need to chip it you basically you need to scout it set and then you need to figure out if you need to chip it down uh if you need to run a toxic on a pokemon but the thing with gliscor is you can't you can't toxic it so and it's getting a lot more health back than a leftovers right so basically you're forced to have <clears throat> a water attack or an ice attack generally an ice attack right you're forced to take up a move slot whereas i feel like on lando people like sometimes will be like nah I can forego Hidden Power Ice, I'll put on Toxic or something like that, catch it and we'll chip it down. But I feel like when you're versing a Gliscor, like, it's very... You have to have an Ice Beam, you have to have a Hidden Power Ice, otherwise Gliscor is just going to keep chipping you, it's going to keep setting up rocks, it keeps setting up Defog, it's got U-Turn. Uh, not to mention, this could be an offensive Gliscor, it's got uh, Sword Stance and Rock Polish, the same as Landorus, but it's got way higher defense. So, you know, but it doesn't have Intimidate, so I can see that's why people really think Landorus is a lot better, but I feel like Gliscor in Draft is just really good as well, um, if not the exact same. So, uh, But for his set here, you have Aerial Ace or Acrobatics, depending on what you run, Aqua Tail, Earthquake, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, Knock Up, Poison Jab, Rock Slide, Throat Chop, and U-Turn. 
quite a bit of coverage here. Uh, very viable as an offensive set. Um, but its utility is what makes this Pokemon so awesome. Defog, Toxic, Taunt, um, Tailwind, and Stealth Rock. Uh, and then the U-Turn. It just makes it a really phenomenal Pokemon to lead, to switch into physical or special attacks. Since its physical defense is so high, you could afford to run it in special defense if you wanted to. Just a phenomenal Pokemon in draft, in my opinion. Um, I'm just so surprised that people just, you know, really are just like, ah, oh, it's Gliscor, right? But yeah, I think this is going to be a Pokemon that's going to be uh, the star of the show a lot later in the draft. So, <clears throat> I organized my, my notes a lot better this time. But yeah, so uh, Rotom H... Uh, we only have two more offensive Pokemon that I'm going to mention, uh, including Rotom H here. Uh, Rotom H, you guys know, Nasty Plot, T-Bolt, Bolt Switch, Overheat, Hidden Power, and then has Dark Pulse. Um, but a set that I just, you know, I hope that I see these sets more later in the draft because they're so good, is these Hex Willowis Pain Split sets. They're super obnoxious, uh, very, very annoying. Um, very good on these bulkier Pokemon that can really take advantage of the Pain Splits. Um, and low HP, right? You know, people forget that Pain Split, it scales off of the opponent's HP. So like, you know, if Rotom has, you know, five health and he Pain Splits uh, Chansey, he's getting full health because Chansey's HP is so high, he's taking much more, right? Chansey's health is like, you know, I've, I don't know the number, but anyways, Rotom's, Rotom's base health is 50 and Chansey's is not. Um, but yeah, people forget that. So, uh, but also it has screens. It has toxic T wave and trick. Trick being a very, very fun, viable option on Rotoms all the time. It's super annoying to get tricked by it um, because it's fast. It can choice scarf. It can choice specs. It hits hard. Um, and then last but not least here is another defogger. So right now we're at one, two. Yeah, we're at three defogs. This is awesome because. Um, like I mentioned in my NC NCPL analysis, um, having multiple defoggers, you know, you might think, oh, he's just like, you know, overlapping, overlapping on this. But this this allows those defensive Pokemon an extra move slot. You know, if Rotom's a better defogger this map uh, match, that allows Gliscor to run a different move, be an offensive Gliscor. This allows uh, Empoleon to be offensive or um, run a different move like Toxic or something like that. And... Volcanion to run four attacks rather than defog or run haze. It's just <clears throat> When you pile up on defog and rocks and stuff like that. I think that's when it's okay When you pile up on Pokemon that have the same attacks or do the same thing um, it, With less versatility then that's where it's the problem, but like You know Rotom, Gliscor, Empoleon and Volcanion they can all be offensive or defensive, and that's what makes uh, stocking up on these defogs really beautiful. So, um, yeah. So, Rotom Age. That's that's really. I, I expect to see Rotom Age a lot in defense and offense, um, just because it's so versatile in both. It can do both so easily. Um, but second, second to last year, we have Gengar, which is just a monster in draft. Um, <coughs> the amount of things Gengar can do is crazy. So obviously this comes down to the the owner of Gengar as well, or the trainer, and how he utilizes it. But of course you have the Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, Sludge Bomb, Dark Pulse, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, Hidden Power, Thunderbolt, covers everything. He's super fast, hits super hard. Um, Ghost Offense is just really good. Um, but his utility sets is just, it's it's out of this world. I mean, if you can, if you can utilize him, uh, with these sets, it makes Gengar so hard to predict on what he's going to be doing for his team. You have Clear Smog, you have Corrosive Gas, you have Haze, you have Knockoff, you have a Stab, Hex, Toxic, Will-O-Wisp, uh, and Disable set. It's just like, you know, um, so I think this, the actual set is uh, Hex, Will-O-Wisp, Substitute, is it Hex, Will-O-Wisp, substitute disable yeah that's what it is um with uh black sludge a really annoying set uh you could do this with toxic too but the will o wisp is annoying because uh it, it it allows him to survive longer since you're you're weakening their their base moves or base power so 
Uh, but yeah, then he has Trick, Taunt, Reflect type, Explosion, just a lot of things this Gengar can do. And like I said, you guys, when you can run physical, special, or defensive, uh, and you, you your team has that, it's so hard to predict how you want to use your team uh, and how that how that person's going to use the team. So very, very good drafting here by Phil. Um, I think this is something that people might have just like... I mean, I did. So maybe when I say people, I'm referring to myself, you know, his draft right away didn't look super awesome. But once, once we dive into it here, he has so many ways to build his Pokemon and build his team. Very, very good drafting here. Um, and last but not least on the offensive side, I'm going to mention Empoleon here. And the reason I'm going to mention Empoleon as an offensive threat is because he has so many ways to defog um, <clears throat> that he might not e need Empoleon to be a uh, defensive Pokemon. And Empoleon has good special attack. It's base 111. So uh, he also has Swords Dance agility with Defiance. So he could be a defog deterrent. You could set up webs and then you could force the opponent to want to defog. Switches in on the defog, gets the defiant boost, sets up the agility, maybe another sword sense, and he sweeps a team. I mean, he's got good physical coverage. He's got uh, liquidation. He's got aqua jet, earthquake, drill pack, knockoff, rock slide, throat chop. Uh, it's just he, you know, he's viable to do this. So I really hope to see uh, a defiant offensive set from him pulling on here. Just super crazy. It would catch people off guard. Um, but then you have a special side, which is totally fine too. You have Scald or Surf or Hydro Pump, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power, uh, and Ice Beam. So still very good on the special attacking side. He could definitely be a, uh, you know, a Wall Breaker or a Scarfer. Uh, I actually don't know if he could be a Scarfer. Let's see what his base speed is at. Yeah, probably couldn't be a Scarfer, but he definitely could be a Wall Breaker with base 111 special attack because in a modest, yeah, that's 353 modest, so um, that would be basically the same as what Vanillix is, um, and Vanillix is considered a wall breaker as well. Although Vanillix does have a uh, freeze dry, which is broken, but yeah, besides the point. Um, anyways, uh, for Empoleon's utility moves, it's got Sing, Defog, Rocks, Roar, Toxic, Whirlpool, Yawn. Um, I'll mention all these defensive sets again when I go into defense. I totally forgot that I, you know, usually don't mention them when I'm going through the offensive stuff, but. I organized it so well this time, I just started reading. Um, but yeah, uh, and like I said, the Shuckle guys, you could do the power trick, but I mean, I, I wouldn't. I, I, in my opinion, I feel like you're wasting you're wasting the spot on your team if you do something like that. You catch somebody off guard maybe once in a while, right? Um, but yeah, defense here, uh, I scored a 7 as well. 23 minutes. Defense. So I scored it a seven as well. Um, so, and the reason that it's a seven and he has such good defensive Pokemon here, it could be higher. So a little bit on the fence here between, you know, seven to nine. I just, he has really good defoggers. He stockpiled up on them. His defensive Pokemon are really good utility wise, uh, but it's this earthquake weakness that, that bothers me a bit. And that's kind of why his offense is a seven too. Um, even though he's got lots of setup, he's got lots of wall breaking. This earthquake weakness and these two times four weaknesses, uh, ice weaknesses are are really going to be bad for him. Um, you know, hidden power ice is available in this. Earthquake is such an easy move to put on Pokemon. Um, earthquake being able to cover, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five Pokemon. That being Volcanion, Eleki. Uh, Metagross, Gengar, and Empoleon, and then you have two Pokemon that are times four weak, weak to Hidden Power, uh, or uh, times four weak to Ice, being Gliscor and Sceptile. Um, when you pile up on these type of things, this is when uh, it makes it easy for the opponent to um, make move sets. So totally okay to run six Pokemon with Earthquake, six Pokemon with Ice. I mean, totally viable to do that. You would be shutting down. Um, more than half of his team with that so uh that is a, a big issue on this defense um and, and his offense to some extent here so <clears throat> not to say that you can play you can't play around it um just going to be something that phil's going to have to watch out for um or you know like i mentioned earlier maybe trade something for, for that reggie lucky to help with that that weakness um i don't even know what you would trade for that's something i maybe should have looked up but yeah uh, for the defensive Pokemon, um, I mean, 
generally what we're gonna see here is Gliscor, Rotom, uh, Buzzwool, Empoleon, and Shuckle. So uh, obviously every Pokemon here has utility, um, like I mentioned, um, but I'm not gonna mention every single Pokemon uh, because every single Pokemon can be defensive here, totally, like I was mentioning with Gengar, um, you know, and even Volcanion with Haze and Defog, right? So, uh, but the defensive Pokemon, like I said, it's going to be Gliscor, Rotom H, Empoleon, and Shuckle, and Buzzwool. So, um, Buzzwool being his Earthquake resistant here, and I mean, it's one of the best Earthquake resistances here. Uh, he just has such high defense, um, resisting the, the, the ground or Earthquake, um, is, is going to be great. It's going to be able to get Buzzwool in. Buzzwool can Toxic something. Um, he has enough coverage to probably cover uh, what Phil would be expecting to come in. So Buzzwool having good recovery as well with Roost. Um, and then Roost Toxic Taunt. So, you know, he could, you know, Toxic whatever's going to be incoming, Toxic whatever's in his face, um, you know, or, or get Phil, you know, into... Uh, picking up on the habit you know he switches in buzzwell what's his opponent constantly switching in on buzzwell the next time that you're going to be switching into buzzwell you could make that prediction that by switching in buzzwell right now he's going to be switching in this pokemon i'm going to switch into something that's going to deal with that that incoming pokemon instead of what's right in front of me right now that would be a double prediction <clears throat> generally pretty risky but when you pick up on that opponent's uh, habit of doing that uh that that could be a really big turning point for people in games so or players in games so <clears throat> then we have uh so it's kind of kind of weird we're doing the defense even though i already mentioned it uh, a little bit by accident sorry um i just organized my notes so well this time that i just started reading all of them uh instead of the way i organized it splitting it to offense and defense orange being offense blue being defense so um uh, yeah, the Gliscor, you guys, uh, this is going to be a phenomenal defensive Pokemon for Phil uh, mid to late in the draft. It's just going to be such a big cornerstone for his team. The issue with this Gliscor, though, is that it's coupled with that Sceptile, which both times for week two. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just such an easy thing to put Hidden Power Ice or Ice Beam on a Pokemon and be able to cover both these guys. But yeah, that Defog U-Turn Stealth Rocks um, is just, it's great. It can do everything for his team. Uh, defensively uh, you know being able to set up rocks and defog and u-turn um, that allows rotom h that allows uh, uh empoleon to be more offensive and run those extra move slots as offensive um options right so um <laughs> i won't beat a dead horse on that but yeah uh empoleon you guys i mentioned the defog uh defog defiant set uh but i'll get into these utility options that i was uh mentioning with sing <clears throat> so now sing you could say like you know it's 55 accuracy right you can put that on as more of an offensive option i should have mentioned the offensive side of this but sing and blunder policy really annoying because you either get the sing off or you get the speed boost uh so it's like a win-win uh you get the speed boost you set up swords dance you don't get the speed boost uh you set up sing and then you just sword stance anyway. So a very good offensive thing that Empoleon can pull off here. Um, but Empoleon, again, like the Gliscor, can set up Defog and Rocks. Um, very good. An important move here as well that I feel like uh, even myself, I always forget about when drafting, is Roar. Um, now, subs and setup and screens, all very common in draft. And having Roar is going to be able to... Uh, deal with those setup Pokemon a lot, a lot better. So um, it's, you know, for example, you know, the opponent's pretty comfortable. They think they can set up more than once in your face. You roar and then it sends them out. And then they got to restart from square one, depending how long it took them to get into the position that they got to to set up. So a very overlooked move, roar. Um, and again, like I said, when you have the Gliscor that's running Defog Rocks and U-Turn, this is going to allow the that empoleon to run roar uh without having to be like oh man do i gotta give up rocks or do i gotta give up defog or do i gotta get up give up uh you know a coverage move um this is gonna allow him to run roar and toxic and you know even yawn maybe um but also empoleon is able to trap which i mentioned in some of my earlier brdl analysis uh is trapping sets are very good 
Um, they're very underrated. I think if you can trap a Pokemon that the opponent thinks he can switch into and just freely deal with, uh, you trap it, you get that Whirlpool damage, you get that Toxic, uh, you know, pretty annoying. Uh, especially because the opponent can't do anything. You know, you're trapped, you don't have Shed Skin or, or Shed Shell. Um, you're basically just losing a Pokemon, and it's just like, you know, it's a very um, slow, painful death is how I'd explain it, so. Uh, but last but not least, we have the Shuckle, which <laughs> another Pokemon to set up rocks. We have Gliscor can set up rocks. We have Metagross that can set up rocks. We have Empoleon that can set up rocks. And now we have Shuckle that can set up rocks. Guys, this is super awesome. Being able to have this many rockers is important for his team, especially because his team uh, is gonna want to come in and either uh, clean at the end or revenge kill um, uh, easily. Getting that rock chip damage is good. Um, it's really gonna help Sceptile, it's gonna help Volcanion, it's gonna help Gengar get these um, one hit KOs, right? That little bit of extra damage is important. Um, but Shuckle also having webs to secure his speed. Uh, just phenomenal speed and speed control for this team. Um, you know, like I mentioned with the Empoleon, you set up the sticky webs. This is forcing the opponent to want to defog. This is allowing you now to have Empoleon as a threat uh, since it has Defiant, which I think people forget about a lot. So just like very, um, it's very articulate. It's almost like Phil really knew exactly what he wanted to draft it here just a little bit overlooked that earthquake weakness um but he obviously was prepared with that buzzwool so um and then you have final gambit which is super annoying you just send it out first you set up webs you final gambit basically almost kill something send in the next pokemon either set up or you know sweep wall break whatever it is um and then you know toxic infestation on core you guys know the deal with Shuckle, he has Mental Herb, you basically can't stop him, it's pretty annoying. Um, I, right now, still can't figure out how, how I would deal with Shuckle, like, yes, you can you can Magic uh, Guard, you can Magic Bounce, um, or what's it, Magic, it's the one, it's, oh, I know the ability is Magic Bounce, but there's, there's a move, uh, Norman just used it, actually, um, but yeah, anyways. Those are ways, it's still very, basically you want a Toxic Shuckle and you want to beat down Shuckle, you want to make sure you can get those rocks or wives off the field uh, while also getting that Toxic damage on Shuckle, so. But yeah, Defense 7, um, I think this could be better. Uh, it's not to say his defense is bad or anything like that. There's just a few coupled weaknesses that uh, could spell a big problem for his team, so. Um, but moving on the list here, we have Speed. So, uh, you guys, his speed is just out of this world, okay? We have Mega Sceptile here, who's got base 145 speed, equals out 427 in Timid. Um, and then you have Reggie Ilecki, who, <laughs> base 200 speed, like, gee, come on. Like, that's, that's out of control, okay? Base 200 speed in a timid or jolly nature. That's 548. That that beats that beats people that are running choice scarfs. Um, and if you choice scarf this yourself, there's nothing that's outspeeding you really. Um, just just wild speed control here. Um, anyways, then you have the agility on Metagross. You have Gliscor, who's quite a fast Pokemon for being a defensive Pokemon. I think it's in yeah 95. That's hella fast for a defensive Pokemon. Like, that's 317 in a defensive Pokemon with 286 defense. No EVs invested. No uh, defensive nature. 352 HP, like, crazy. Crazy on a defensive Pokemon. Um, you have Rotom, again, another defensive Pokemon that's fast. Um, 298 and Timid, very close to that 300 uh, level. And then you have Gengar. Gengar sitting at a comfortable 350, base 110, just really, really good speed here. Um, this is going to force a lot of people to run Choice Scarves. I mean, they should be running Choice Scarves against this team. Uh, otherwise, it's, he's just going to be able to out-damage you, and he, like out-damage, out-pace you, really. Um, and then to really, really sum it all up, he's got webs. If he knows the opponent's going to be wanting to Scarf, or if there's uh, the opponent's got Sticky Webs himself, uh, Phil's got sticky webs too. He can deal with it. Uh, or if there's rain or sand, he's got sticky webs to deal with it. Uh, he just, 
he really secured his speed uh, tiers here with that sticky webs um, and forcing the opponent to uh, think about those webs and you know play a little bit more passively around these webs making sure that they don't stay on the field so really phenomenal speed that is why it's a 10 you guys uh, just yeah like I said it's very articulate it's almost like he knew exactly what he wanted to draft here and uh, and what what things he needed to cover uh, minus that you know earthquake weakness and that ice weakness but yeah so uh, yeah okay I gotta mention, okay, when I'm when I'm talking about like s speed, hazards, and momentum, you're gonna feel like I fly through these. But the thing is, is like, there's, you can get really deep into this, like speed creeping and stuff like that. But speed creeping, uh, it would almost require me to make a different video on, um, because speed creeping is just a very, it's a draft thing, okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't even want to get into it. It's 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 a lot more in depth. Um, but yeah, there's just it's it's like very very minuscule things that go very deep um so it's kind of hard for me to dive into these speed hazards or momentum things uh either when there's not enough to mention about it or it's like it they need a whole different video for it um but yeah so just quick little tidbit on that anyways hazards i also scored a 10 here 36 30 also scored a 10, like I mentioned many times, beating a dead horse here. Uh, he's got, he's, he's really piled on these rocks, uh, these defogs, and these webs. Um, he's just, he's really piled up on these, on these Pokemon running these things. And like I said, this is going to allow him to uh, spread out his team's use. Uh, he's going to be able to run Rotom as offensive if he wants, Gliscor as offensive if he wants. Um, Metagross more offensively or defensively, and Polion more offensively or defensively. It's just uh, when you when you couple up on those things, it just it really opens up your team's versatility. So, you know, uh, he's got Defog on Volcanion, he's got Defog on Gliscor, he's got Defog on Rotom, he's got Defog on Empoleon. Uh, that's more than that's more than you know. That that could be more than four teams. In total right some teams like don't even have defog some only have one right so i think this is something that people should really take note of in draft is try and draft more than one or at least um make sure the one that you're drafting is extremely reliable like landers or something like that right but yeah you also have rocks on metagross you have rocks on gliscor you have rocks on Empoleon. you have rocks on shuckle uh, like i said that's more than some teams have uh combined like you know three four teams have combined some teams don't even have rocks it's just um phil's just covering a, everything that you want in a draft he's making sure that he's got it covered just in case he needs it for a matchup right um because like i said rocks can be important um that extra tip, chip damage is going to allow you to get those one hit ko's or it's going to allow um it's going to uh break down those defensive pokemon um you know it's going to break those focus ashes Rocks are important, guys. You make sure you want to draft at least one rocker, at least, least minimum. So that means draft more, just one minimum, right? Um, but yeah, sorry, I won't, go, I won't get too crazy about that. But yeah, so that's why the hazards are ten. I mean, there isn't a team that, in my opinion, that's gonna have better hazard and hazard control than this team. Um, the Pokemon that he has the hazards and hazard control on are all reliable. They're all good at it. It's not like um, having rocks on, you know. Uh, Copper Jaw is a Pokemon I don't like rocks on. I, it doesn't make It's so not that bulky in my opinion. Yeah, it's got high HP, but like I generally would want to attack with it. It's just got good attack coverage. You want four attacks on it. I don't get why you would run Stealth Rocks on it. Whereas like Metagross, great as a three three attacks, one Stealth Rock. Gliscor, really reliable Stealth Rocker. And Polion, very reliable Rocker. Shuckle very reliable rocker i mean it's just like keeps piling up right it's just good last but not least we have momentum um now momentum i rated a 7 39 so this one i f i felt could be lower i feel like gengar is really carrying the seven though um that nasty plot from Gengar is really devastating. Um, and like I said, this is carrying the seven because nasty plot Gengar could sweep an entire team uh, if you don't have, you know, a normal type or something to deal with that Shadow Ball. Um, 
it's just you know three three fifty plus or uh, times two. We're we're looking at you know like seven. No, more than that. Um, three fifty nine times. Yeah, it's yeah seven hundred eighteen. So, just yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of special attack. Um, not to mention his speed is three fifty. So. Um, very much carrying this momentum. His team does have Volt Switch in Ileki, U-Turn in Gliscor, and Volt Switch in Rotom H, but that's really it. Um, now, Rotom H and Gliscor and Ileki, they can form a really nice um, Volt Turn core since, you know, Rotom can easily cover uh, Gliscor's Ice Weakness, but the problem is, is they're both weak to water. So, a little bit harder to do that. Um, Reggie, Ileki, and Rotom... Now they can form a core because Rotom having Levitate, but the problem is they both have Volt Switch. So if you if the opponent's got a Ground type or a Lightning Rod or a Volt Absorb, um, it's it kind of it kind of makes both of those Pokemon uh, Volt Switch kind of kind of useless. It's like taking up a move slot at that point. So generally you want Gliscor as one of the as one of the core Pokemon for that, right? So um, but as for like offensive snowballing momentum it's really just Gengar and you know you could say like <clears throat> some offensive sets like Gliscor like um, the Defiant uh, Empoleon like I mentioned and the Swords Dance Sceptile but generally those are a little bit harder to just like outright snowball um, Gengar is really the one that's going to make this the easiest so that's why this is a 7 um, in my opinion this is the weakest point to his team he doesn't have, besides Gengar, uh, like an X factor that's just like, if this Pokemon sets up, that's game. You know, like, for example, uh, Jared's Volcarona or Jared's Dragonite or Jared's Mawile, if any of those Pokemon get set up, even if there's five or six Pokemon left, it could be game, right? Um, whereas Sceptile getting a Sword Stance, you probably could deal with it. You know, um, since it's times four weak to ice, same with Glissor, times four weak to ice, uh, you can deal with it, right? So, um, but yeah, guys, that's Phil's team here. I think Phil's team is is one of the better teams drafted. Uh, his hazard and hazard control is just super good. Um, something very important in draft. Um, it's going to make his team building a lot easier. But again, he has some, some cons and some flip sides to this. He's coupled up on some times war weaknesses. He's got a lot of earthquake weakness. And again, uh, something that's been a common thing on teams here. He doesn't have any, any. Uh, he's got two flying weaknesses too. He's got Buzzwell and Sceptile, both weak to flying. Um, so this is something, I mean, there isn't a lot of flying. I guess there's a lot of flying Pokemon. I don't know. But yeah, anyways, guys, that's Phil's team. Uh, definitely a team that I overlooked. Maybe that's a team you overlooked too. Um, didn't think it was bad or anything like that. Just didn't think it was as good as it was until I really dove deep into it here and how versatile his team can be. So um, I look forward to seeing Phil showing, showing that off a lot throughout this draft. And uh, we'll see you guys on number four.